Hey y'all, this is Ghost Queen. So, um, I apologize that I haven't posted a video in a while. It's been exam season and I've been completely swamped with what I need to do. Thankfully, um, that is coming to an end, so I'll be able to start filming again. However, I'm kind of running low on ideas, so I can't really promise anything. But yeah, I just hope that you guys will be patient with me in the meantime. And the reason, part of the reason why I'm making this video is because there's been a lot of talk about climate change recently, especially on my Instagram feed and I just thought that it was an issue that I really wanted to address and I know this is really different from what I normally talk about but it's a very concerning issue and it's it's not just something that we can wave off and wait to talk about because it's just right now is when we can make a difference and this is some serious stuff that I really can't cover in one video but um, we need to do something now. So, it's not like what I'm going to be doing in this video is going to be anything game changing, but I thought by showing a way to recycle plastic bags and other materials would be one way to spread awareness. So, I just think no matter how small my efforts are, somebody might see this and think, man, maybe I can use some trash that might otherwise end up in a landfill or in the ocean or something like that. So yeah, that's why I'm making this video. And I also challenge you guys to try thinking outside the box and use items in your house that will otherwise end up as waste and try to make them into something practical like I'm gonna do right now. So with that serious stuff out of the way, let's get started. So before I show you guys how to make the craft that I'm going to be making in this video, I need to show you how to make one of the materials, which is this here. This is the twine that I made today out of um, probably around four plastic bags. They were all brown in color because I had a few brown ones and they happened to be in a very inconvenient size that didn't fit on my trash can that I have in my room so yeah I made it and I also think I should show you how to make it first before I get into the actual craft and I will link the original video that I saw in the description below um, it explains very thoroughly how to make this and honestly I don't think I really need to explain anything that she does. She does her job very well. However, in her video she uses a crochet needle and I do not have one. So um, I kind of had to improvise my own way on making this and I was able to do it quite well. So I decided to show you guys my method of making this without using a crochet needle. To do that, obviously you're gonna need your own plastic bag. It can be any color you want. Like I said, I use brown. This one is just a normal plastic bag. It's from Daiso. It doesn't really matter what color it is. And you're also going to need a wooden skewer with a little bit of tape on the blunt end. Um, I just used some masking tape. And this is just to prevent it from slipping off the stick. And if you have a really, really thin knitting needle, like for knitting lace and stuff like that, that will also work. But um, whatever you use, it just has to be very, very thin. So first things first, you're gonna have to take your bag, lay it as flat as possible, and then fold it in half. And then fold it in half again, and in half again, and then squeeze out all the air to make it as flat as possible. Then you're gonna take a pair of scissors and then cut the join part at the bottom as close to the join part as possible because you unfortunately can't really reuse this piece so you want this piece to be as small as possible so that very little plastic bag goes to waste. Then you want to turn it around and then find where the handles end and where the bag begins and then cut as close to the edge as possible. Again, unfortunately, you can't reuse this part, so you want as little as it as po 
as little leftover as possible. Can't talk today. Unfortunately, I can't really think of ways to reuse these parts of the bag. They can't really be made into twine. But um, on the bright side, it's much less plastic bag that is going into your trash. Then what you want to do is take this tube, fold it in half, and then cut it into little strips, kind of like this. And you just keep going until you run out of plastic bag. These are eventually going to become the twine, so you want them to be as equal as possible. They don't have to be perfect, but you want them to be balanced. Now take one of these little plastic pieces and open them up so you get this little loop right here. Take uh, your stick and uh, fold your loop in half. Keep this loop on your finger and then take the other two loops on the other side and then place your stick through and hold on to this end with your finger and then have these sides stay on the stick. Then take the sharp end and then start turning it towards you and twist the plastic strand and uh, just keep turning, keep turning, keep turning until it's tightly twisted on itself as tightly as possible. I kind of messed up. Just keep going until it's as tight as you can get it. Now switch to the other side and do the exact same thing. Just turn it towards you and keep twisting until it looks exactly like the other side. Now it should look something like this. Then push this end as close to the other one as possible so that they're pretty much touching each other and keep it on the blunt end. Then you want to turn it away from you this time and turn that as tight as possible and uh, don't tie your finger by accident just like I just did and then just keep turning away from you until it gets as tight as possible and there we go that's your twine and to continue it you take another piece do the exact same thing, fold it in half. Oh wait, before that, why is it connected? Just gonna rip it apart. Let's do the exact same thing, just have it in a loop. And then you want to take off this from the stick so that you pretty much have it like this. And you can see that there's a hole up here from where the stick is. I'm gonna put it back in so it doesn't unravel. And then you wanna take the other plastic loop here and you want to twist one of the ends of it as small as possible as tightly as possible so that you can make it nice and thin then you want to take this off of the stick and then thread it through the hole then you want to ho hold this loop in half kind of like this and then place this stick through these ends over here and then start the process all over again. You just want to, whoops, start twisting this one towards you. Remember, for the individual strands, you want to twist the stick towards you. And just keep turning until it goes as tight as possible. Sometimes these will happen, and this is the disadvantage of using a wooden skewer instead of a crochet needle because if you have a crochet needle, it'll catch on the tip and not slip out. And then do it for the other side. Again, turn towards you and then twist as tight as possible. Then you want to join these two together so that they're touching and then twist, whoops, away from you this time. And there we have it. And then just repeat this process until you run out of these plastic loop thingies. 
So for the actual project, you're going to need, obviously, the twine and also a piece of recycled cardboard. You're going to need a little bit more than this, but uh, I have it cut down to size so I can show it in the camera, as well as a jar. This is not going to be part of the project, so you can just use whatever. But uh, it's going to be a lot easier if the jar is straight and not curved or anything. You're going to need a few more wooden skewers. Uh, ideally, you could just use some recycled ones. However, I don't have any. Um, although these did get uh, accidentally dumped onto the floor, so they can't be used. So in a way, I am uh, giving them a use. And you're also going to need some hot glue. For tools, you're gonna need some scissors and maybe some wire cutters. I don't know how easy these skewers are to cut through. Oh yeah, you'll also need a pencil and a scrap of fabric. I'm, For the sake of this video and the theme of it, I'm gonna be using a scrap of fabric from an old shirt that I don't wear anymore. So first things first, you wanna take the jar and trace that onto your piece of cardboard. Um, I kind of want the cardboard to be slightly bigger than the jar, so I'm going to turn it around because this jar has a little bit of a lip at the top, and then use that as a reference instead. And I'm just going to take my scissors and cut it out. Okay, I didn't mention this in the supplies earlier because I didn't think it would be an issue, but uh, hot glue does not come off of glass very easily. So I'm gonna be taking a piece of masking tape and putting it onto the bottom. Then I'm gonna be taking this cardboard circle and then taking the hot glue, I'm gonna put some onto the masking tape here and then gluing the cardboard circle onto the bottom of the jar just to secure it. I don't think that's enough glue. Once that's done, take four of your skewers and then stab them into the four corners of the jar. You might need the help of a needle, but I think I'm gonna be doing just fine with just the skewers. Just stab them in so that they stand straight up. Easier method, turn your jar upside down and then stab the cardboard. Then take four more skewers and then stab in between each of these uh, previous skewers. Just for the sake of safety, I'm going to be taking each of these skewers and then turning them backwards. And stabbing them back like this so that the points don't end up in the project. Also, um, I'm not even going to attempt cutting these with scissors. I'm just going to go in with my wire cutters and I'm just going to snip off the protruding ends. Realizing now that there's way too many gaps, I'm going to take a couple more of these skewers, probably around eight more, and stab them in between each of the gaps. So here I've just cut everything down again, and now I'm just going to be taking some hot glue and then gluing it around to secure each of the skewers into place. Um, at this point, I've essentially coated the entire bottom with hot glue just to keep everything secure. I don't want to risk anything. And I'm just going to turn the jar over just like this. And then I'm just going to straighten out the sticks as much as possible. It's not that possible. 
And now I'm going to take my twine. And um, honestly, I've only seen tutorials about how to do this, so I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to do it. But I'm just going to put this here and thread it through the back of this stick right here. And basically, you're just going to have to weave your twine around these sticks. Just go up and down and up and down and all around. Push your twine all the way to the bottom whenever you can. Honestly, don't do it immediately. Uh, I sorely regret my decision to do that. The sticks are going to be a bit loose at first. So um, keep that in mind. And uh, just keep going. And be very careful. This is a very slow and dangerous process. You do not want to destroy your entire project. This is how it looks now, and this is where I'm going to stop. I'm going to take my wire cutters and cut the rest of the skewers off. Now I'm just going to add a dab of hot glue to the top of each of these, and then I'm going to start gluing the twine onto the top to just hide the dowel thingies and uh, make it look a little bit more pretty. I'm gonna take my scissors and trim around the bottom to take off the excess cardboard. Now I'm going to take the rest of this twine and start gluing it to the bottom of this container to cover up all the ugly bits. So here's the bottom of my little basket now and it looks much neater than it did before. And here's another view of it from all around. It looks quite nice. Now for the final step, I'm gonna take the piece of cardboard again and uh, the jar yet again. And I'm gonna be using the smaller end this time and tracing it onto the piece of cardboard. Then I'm gonna cut it out. As uh, you can see here, it um, doesn't exactly fit inside, so I'm going to take it in a little at a time to sort of trim the edges off and then see if it fits inside. I'm just going to keep going until it does. As you can see, it has a little bit of give, which is good. I'm going to take it back out. Here I have an old piece of fabric from that shirt and uh, I'm just going to clear away an area here. I'm going to take my piece of cardboard and uh, using that as a guide, I'm going to cut this down to size a little bit. I'm going to leave about a quarter inch of a seam so that I have some fabric to glue down. Then I'm gonna glue down the fabric. Here I've cut a circle from the same material and I'm gonna be gluing it on to cover up this ugly side. And then I'm just gonna drop it into the basket. I realized that my first circle was a little bit too small, so I made another one. And it's uh, just right, so I'm gonna keep it like that. 
And here it is, a miniature basket type container made entirely out of recycled materials, minus uh, the glue, of course. You can honestly make this in any size, depending on what type of materials you have lying around, how many plastic bags you have to use. Honestly, you can use whatever color plastic bags you have and paint it afterwards. I've seen people paint their baskets made out of paper and things like that, so I think you can paint this as well as long as you use acrylic paint um, and seal it afterwards. Um, I just made it small because I only had a small amount of twine and I only had so long to make a video. But yeah, this turned out quite cute and a lot better than I expected. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys are able to think of creative ways to use things that will otherwise end up as trash and use it to make something special. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!